Stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Color party! Order! Colors! Color party composite! Colors! Veterans, Silver Cross families, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for attending the unveiling of the Afghanistan War Memorial in Amherst, Nova Scotia on this beautiful 23rd day of September 2023. This monument is a result of many months of hard work, dedication and resolve spearheaded by Branch 10 Sergeant at Arms Justin McKay CD and his many, many volunteers. $36,262 in donations were collected with support from the provincial government to private citizens everywhere, along with an additional $4,000 in material and labor provided to make sure that this project happened. I will now read off the statement made by Honorable Blake Richard, Member of Parliament, Banff Airdrie, Alberta, Shadow Minister of Veterans Affairs. Statement on the unveiling of the Afghanistan War Monument in Amherst, Nova Scotia. 40,000 brave men and women served as part of Canada's mission in Afghanistan. Each one of them endured extreme risks and made tremendous sacrifices in the service of Canada. 
Throughout the mission, Canadians worked tirelessly to provide security to the Afghan people, to deliver uh, critical aid, clear millions of unexploded landmines and IEDs, uh, decommission thousands of heavy weapons. 160 of Canada's finest men and women made the ultimate sacrifice in Afghanistan. Thousands more were injured with physical and psychological injuries. We can never repay these soldiers for their sacrifice. However, we can and must uphold our sacred duty to remember them. Thanks to the initiative and hard work of the many individuals, organizations who came together to make the construction of this monument possible, uh, generations will come uh, and be reminded of our duty to remember our Afghanistan heroes. You can all, sorry, uh, you can all sit now. My apologies. Jesus, you stood for all that? So I'll now call on the first speaker, uh, Mr. Alex Ruff, Colonel Retired, MSC, CD, MP, uh, Gray and Simcoe, Owen Sound. Mr. Alex Ruff. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an absolute honor to be here today. I'm blown away by the support and the incredible community spirit that we're seeing here in this great town of Amherst, Nova Scotia. So I just, I, I just want to start with a huge thank you to every single one of you. A thank you to Justin and Jeremy, who sent me the initial invite for this number of months ago uh, to come down here and be part of something that's so important for Canada and our veterans. Before I get into, I guess, my keynote speech, because I actually didn't realize I was given sort of a keynote speech, but I will keep this short. I do want to recognize the many dignitaries and important people that are here today. Uh, Colonel White, Chief Warrant Officer uh, Hostler, thank you for, for coming here and representing our serving members. Uh, Mayor Murray uh, Scott, if I got that correctly, for, for being here as well. Uh, Minister uh, Rushton, uh, MLA McCrushen, thank you for being here. I'm sure there's many more politicians. MP Stephen Ellis, a good colleague of mine and a great friend that I've got to know over the last couple of years. Uh, thanks, thanks for being here. For the Memorial Cross families, thank you for being here. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about you uh, shortly. For all the veterans that have served in multiple conflicts around the globe, in the service of Canada and in service here in Canada, thank you. But more importantly, just thank you to everybody that's here today. This war memorial represents 158 soldiers, a couple more Canadians that made the supreme sacrifice. And as this, the previous remarks hinted at, unfortunately, there's a lot more to it than, the, than just those that made the supreme sacrifice. The list is actually a lot longer. And it's actually the toughest part of being a, being a veteran is when you're still seeing soldiers, sailors, and air crew that unfortunately are still facing the demons that the conflict of Afghanistan brought to them and to the forefront and that are still struggling to this day. And it's those that unfortunately can't find a way out that I think we need to do more, to, more for to continue to support them because that's such a difficult, difficult thing. I know, I had the honor and privilege of serving with a large number of the 158 names that are on this memorial. I can't go through all of them, but there's a few I do want to bring special attention to. Tutu Bravo, six of my own soldiers, and there's a number of my former soldiers here in the crowd today that I had the pleasure to go to war with because we, again, maybe I'm biased, but I believe we were, we, we were, we were part of the, 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 the greatest soldiers uh, in the world at the time, doing our best to make a difference. And unfortunately, in April 8th of 2007, we lost six of the finest in Sergeant Donnie Lucas, Corporal Brent Poland, Corporal Aaron Williams, Corporal Christopher Stanix, Private David Greenslade, and Private Kevin Kennedy, for the most part all Maritimers. And again, it speaks to something that's unique to 
the Maritimes, to Nova Scotia, to New Brunswick, PEI, Newfoundland, and Labrador, is I don't actually think the Canadian Armed Forces would exist without the incredible contributions of Atlantic Canada. So thank you. And I think that's witnessed here today. Now as elected official, I represent the great riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound where I'm from and, and we've done and had many soldiers serve and make the sacrifice, but in particular Corporal Mitchell was somebody that made the supreme sacrifice and I've got to know his family very well, Carol and Bob. And uh, so a shout out to them because I know they represent just like the Memorial Cross family members here today. Um, the loss that we all feel is nothing compared to the loss and sacrifices that you have made. And Corporal Jeff Parker, or not Corporal, Colonel Jeff Parker, uh, officer, senior, most senior officer killed in Afghanistan. I was just, again, texting with his, his spouse, MJ, yesterday as she reached out to me. And it's, it's tough when you, you have that personal relationship, somebody that I knew since when I first showed up at the 3rd Battalion in 1997. The big thing is, why is this memorial here? It's because we can't forget. Every mission that I've ever been on, whether it be Bosnia, Afghanistan, or Iraq, and I'm sure many that are here, whether it was Cyprus, Korea, we don't have too many World War II veterans left. One of the questions, yeah, thank you for their service. One of the questions we always get when you come back from war or from conflict is the why. People are always constantly facing that question. And there is no easy answer. But I honestly believe, and I've 100% believed and supported every mission that I ever had the privilege of being part of because I believe that as Canadians, we have the ability to make a difference around the globe. We stand up for something important. And ultimately, in Afghanistan, it's been troubling because things didn't go the way we wanted. I'm on the public record. The mission did not end the way we wanted it to end. We've seen the Taliban take over. But as I've said before, by our contributions to that mission, there's a whole generation of girls and women that got to see the difference. And I'm confident, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, 30 years from now, there will be leadership in Afghanistan getting that country back to being a democratic country and making a difference in this world. The toughest thing I ever had to do was in the top of the, the, the shittiest day and pardon my language was when I lost my six guys. However, the toughest day I ever had was when we got back from Afghanistan and I got to meet the families and the loved ones of those that made the supreme sacrifice. Because there is no easy answer. And unfortunately, you may never know the answer. The only thing I can tell you for everybody here that lost a family or a friend somebody that they knew personally in conflict is that we won't remember them. And that's why this memorial's here, is to remember these people and their families that made the supreme sacrifice. Pro patria, lest we forget. Thank you very much, sir. We'll now call up Dr. Stephen Ellis, MP for Cumberland, Colchester. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, following an act like Alex Ruff's is tough. Um, you know what? Alex Ruff is emblematic of a Canadian who's been there, done that, got the T-shirt. He served in Afghanistan. He served in Bosnia. He's been in those places and he knows what he talks about. And I want to reassure everybody here that this is heartfelt from Alex. He didn't shed a tear, but I know, <laughs> I know Alex well enough to know that that was a heartfelt moment for him. And that he will fight for the rights of veterans. And this is a man that is not afraid to speak up in the House of Commons and say the right thing. So remember, we have a voice there.
the final thought that, that I really want to focus on is um, for everyone out there, this is personal. It's personal for me. I know a guy like Alex. My brother served in Afghanistan. I know the Memorial Cross families that are here, the Reed families here, the Tedford families here, that I mention them specifically because I have a, a personal relationship with them. That's the challenge for anybody out there who doesn't feel the personal relationship is meet somebody who has either been there or the family, families who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Meet somebody today that served in Afghanistan. And if, if you don't want to do that, 52% of this country are women. Look at a woman and understand the freedoms that we do have here that, as Alex mentioned, they don't have in Afghanistan. And that's worth fighting for. I've been married for 33 years. It is, yeah. And I have two daughters. And what do we want? For those people in our lives, we want nothing but the best. That is what we want, and that's why we were there. And as Canadians, for us, that's something worth fighting for. Once again, veterans, thank you for your service. Memorial families, thank you for your sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. We will remember them. Thank you very much, sir. I'll now call up the Honorable Tony, uh, correction, Tory Rushton, Province of Nova Scotia. Thank you very much, and thank you to everyone for being here today, dignitaries, uh, uh, special guests, uh, most importantly, the, the service men and women and the families that are here to, uh, to recognize this. Uh, Justin told me that I had to be very quick today, and uh, that's hard for both Justin and I. But uh, for, for, first and foremost, a huge thank you to, uh, to the whole group that made this, uh, this possibility. And it's an honor to bring greetings from the province of Nova Scotia. And, uh, and, and to, say, to say a thank you is, is, is the least that we can do. Um, but what I do want to share is, is there's, there's not a person in Nova Scotia that this, uh, this memorial wouldn't touch in one way, shape, or form. There was a statistic, and I think it's still true, that Nova Scotia per capita provided more service men and women to the Canadian forces than any other province. And for that as a Nova Scotian, for that as a Nova Scotian, I'm very, very proud of uh, to be standing here in front of you today. Um, I have family members that, uh, that, that provide service through, uh, through the uh, reserve. Uh, my father is retired, my father-in-law is retired service, uh, retired at Oromocto. But fortunately, he served in times of peace and peacekeeping duties. He, uh, he, he, he was very fortunate to the time that he did give, give to Canada to protect us all and do a few tours. But this monument's going to mean a few things for, for everybody. And I, I think uh, what I would ask uh, of each and every one today, to take, take this monument, take this time, take it away for what it means to you in your heart and mind, and, and thank, a, thank a service person. Uh, and uh, and uh, sh show her spirit, not just today, but every, every day in, in, in giving a little bit of thanks. Justin did want me to add one more thing. So in, in the backdrop of the monument, there are some maple trees. And those maple trees were specially selected when Justin and Jeremy came to my office uh, several months ago. And we, we discussed about the, the planting of some trees. And, and the group selected these, these maple trees. And the story that Justin wanted me to share is the manager at the nursery for the province of Nova Scotia was a service person. Sean Gillis served in the uh, Patricia uh, group and uh, the, these trees had a little bit of special care. They, they were a little bit delayed in getting here, but that's because Sean wanted to make sure that they were selected the right trees for this monument. Sean was gonna make it here today. I don't know if he's here, but a special thank you to Sean for taking the extra special care because this monument and these trees are gonna be here for generations to come. So thank you very much to the service people and, and uh, we, we will remember, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Smith um, McCrossan, MLA, Cumberland North. Good afternoon, bonjour, veterans. 
Families of the Fallen, MP Alex Ruff and MP Dr. Ellis, Mayor Scott, Deputy Mayor Leon Landry, distinguished guests, friends and family. On behalf of the residents of Cumberland North, I bring greetings today to this very special event. I don't know how all of you are feeling, but I'm feeling a little emotional. It's, it's a lot um, to see the veterans that are here and without even speaking to some of them, I can feel their pain that they're feeling today as this event brings back memories. But I think that is why we need this memorial. That is why uh, we're here today as we unveil this, this very special Afghanistan war memorial. Now the veterans, all of you here, friends like veteran Jeff Casey, who I respect so much and others, have a very special place here in our community to grieve their own invisible wounds and visible, as well as grieve the friends that they lost. We have a place in our community for others to come to our community from across Canada. There's not many of these in our country. This is something that we can be very proud of here in the town of Amherst in the county of Cumberland. We know that in late 2001, the Canadian Armed Forces joined allies in the Afghanistan war to bring peace and stability after terrorist attacks. We all remember what happened in 9-11. Canadian troops protected the most vulnerable and stood for democracy and freedom. 158 soldiers and others lost their lives and more than 40,000 served in that region. And when I hear the word, heard the words today of, of our MP, Alex Ruff, it, it not only makes me emotional, it makes me angry. Every time I think of the women in Afghanistan. They are denied an education. Not long ago, they were denied to even be able to have a job and work and own their own business. It's un unfathomable that this is happening in our world. And the words of our MP, Alex Ruff, gives me hope that, yes, those in, the, in Afghanistan, they know the difference. They have experienced freedom. And let's all pray and hope that that people, there will be strong leadership in the world that will bring that back for them and for everyone around the world to have liberty and have the freedoms that we should enjoy and deserve. I do want to take a moment and also echo uh, my gratitude to Justin McKay, our veteran who served in Bosnia. Thank you for your sacrifice, Justin. And thank you for your leadership in this, on this war memorial. We all know that we all have a lot of great ideas, but it's a, it takes a special person to take that idea, the vision, and actually make it happen and, and bring it to, to fruition like we're doing here today. So I want to thank Justin. I want to thank the Amherst Legion Branch 10 and their leadership and support and everyone that uh, helped make this happen today. Uh, it's very important, I believe, that we all stand for democracy. We never take it for granted. We stand up for those who cannot protect themselves, the most vulnerable. And each one of us can do that in our daily lives. But we also do need the Canadian Armed Forces and others around the world to stand up for democracy and freedom. And I, I wanna just share uh, although I never served, my grandfather did. He served in World War II. And Murray and I have a son that's training right now in basic training. It's quite uh, interesting to hear the stories. And I want to just share uh, for all a little brevity for all the parents out there. I got a text as I was preparing for today from him saying, hey, mom, can I, can I get a little money? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he hasn't gotten paid yet. And but what what struck me, he said, I'm actually, I'm visiting. And he did not know what's happening right here in the town of Amherst today. He said, I'm at the Ottawa War Memorial Museum. 
and I want to buy something here. It was like, wow, I will send you money. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank all the veterans. Thank you for your service. Thanks, thank you for those that continue to serve. Thank you for all that are here, especially our families of the fallen. And thank you again, Justin. And may we all um, take time in our hearts to be thankful for those that have sacrificed their lives for us and for our freedom and for a democracy, lest we forget. Thank you very much, ma'am. I now call on Mr. Mark Joseph, CD, Deputy Municipality of Cumberland. Good afternoon. What a beautiful day. I'm not going to really take much, too much of your time because everybody who spoke before me hit the keynotes. Um, I first want to acknowledge the families of fallen in attendance right now, uh, and our heroes are being honored here today. Thank you for coming. Is the hope you find this moment a place of comfort and remembrance? It's a beautiful sight to see also that all the veterans here who made the trek from all across Canada to be here, thank you. To all the citizens here from near and far, again, welcome. Thank you for joining this special event today. Again, I'd like to acknowledge MP Ruff, MP Steve Ellis, uh, our both MLAs, Mr. Rushton, Emily, Mr. McCrossin, Mayor Scott, our council from municipality, but more importantly, the support from the town of Amherst, Deputy Mayor Landry, Mayor Cogan, who couldn't be here today, and the entire council. Without your support to drive this forward, this would not even get off the ground. So thank you for that. Today is a special day. We are recognized the men and women who pay the ultimate sacrifice for the country in Afghanistan with this beautiful monument. Fellow Canadians and veterans from all over, especially Cumberland County, now have a place to pay their respects and remember their sacrifices. For me personally, this monument is very special as it brings closure. I work closely with over a dozen of these brave Canadian Armed Forces members. In the military, it's your second family, a place where you work tire tireless hours training individually and then collectively as a team to be prepared for anything you may encounter, either uh, foreign or domestic. We train for war, but the ultimate thing we pray for as a soldier is peace. This monument would not be possible if it was not for Amherst Legion Sergeant in Arms and a person I call a brother, Justin McKay. Now, Justin, you get a lot of thanks today. Just remember, you got to put a snowmobile helmet on in a couple of months, okay? <laughs> Your vision and tireless effort, along with support with others, made this day possible. When Justin approached me about a year ago and recommended what he wanted to do, I said, well, I said yes, but there was a word before that. I can't really say it, but I'm like, let's go for it, knowing that he needs the support. You're on a mission, and to ensure no one was forgotten, you have succeeded. Again, I'll reiterate to the Amherst Town Council, thank you for allowing a space for this monument. It coincides with the mural, which is a touching uh, signif a signification to any veteran out there. I also want to thank to the Amherst Legion. Without your support and backing of Justin McKay, again, he, you were the driving force to help him also and a part in this. So thank you too to the Amherst Legion, branch number 10. Your fundraising efforts and attention to detail is truly amazing. Finally, to all the donors near and far who have stepped forward with either on-site work or monetary donations, without you, this would not be possible. Again, if you know who to donate it, thank them too, please, from the bottom of our hearts. Your dedication and support will not be forgotten. Lastly, 
It's my honor and privilege on behalf of the Mayor and Council of the Municipality of Cumberland and from the bottom of our hearts, we want to say thank you and we will remember them. Thank you, sir. VP. I'll now bring up uh, Mr. Leon Landry, Deputy Mayor, Town of Amherst. Thanks very much. I'm probably going to echo some of the comments that have already been made, but I think a lot of them bear repeating. On behalf of Amherst Town Council, I want to welcome you to all to this important event. The town of Amherst is proud to be a partner on this project. The infrastructure you see here was designed and constructed by town of Amherst employees, and I think that they've created a beautiful space. I also want to acknowledge our community well-being team and all other staff who have supported this development. The town holds ownership of this site and will be responsible for the operations and maintenance. And we expect to be able to add additional memorials in the future in keeping with the spirit of inclusivity. What I'd really like to do today is express gratitude. First and foremost, I want to thank the Silver Cross families that are here today and all others that are here representing names etched on this stone. The town of Amherst is honored to offer you this space and we hope you will view it as a safe area to remember your loved ones, reflect as you need to, and we further hope that it brings you closer to healing. I want to thank all Canadian veterans and special thanks to those that are here today. We are proud to keep this space for you. A special thank you to Sergeant at Arms Justin McKay for his outstanding dedication and leadership demonstrated throughout the development of this project and further by seeing it through to fruition. A tremendous amount of work and fundraising has gone into today, as you can well imagine. Justin has also joined one of our committees of council and has spoken about non-visible issues that affect our veterans, and this enables our municipal organization to better serve our community. Justin also collaborated on the monument's design with Warren Officer Craig Collins from Bathurst, who is unable to be here today, Sergeant Rich Dunbar from New Glasgow, and Master Corporal Jeremy Dobson from Oxford. Please accept our appreciation for these efforts. I want to thank the members of Royal Canadian Legion, especially those from our local Branch 10, and to the many volunteers and supporters that made National Legion Week such a success here in the town of Amherst. I believe special thanks should be extended to Lisa Gottschalk for her exceptional organization skills demonstrated at the Legion Hall. Thank you to all dignitaries and to the folks that have traveled to be here today. And, to my, and my apologies to any of those that I have missed. All folks are welcome here. <clears throat> I will leave you with a personal thought. I had the privilege to be employed at CFB Staticona as a civilian contractor from 2009 to 2011. I was an instructor of the first year naval engineering technicians at the Canadian Forces Naval Engineering School. Even though this period was towards the end of Canada's involvement in the Afghan conflict, there were still announcements being piped into the school's PA system. I can tell you that news from overseas deeply impacted everyone that heard it, students and instructors alike. And it's because of this personal experience that I was extremely surprised when Mr. McKay explained to me that there was only one other minor memorial in Nova Scotia that paid tribute to those who served in Afghanistan. I thought that couldn't be true but he explained it was. And this really solidified for me the importance of this event and the importance of creating safe spaces of reflection, like the one we are in today, so that we are able to honor all of those who have served our country. And the town of Amherst is very proud to offer this space to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'll now call up Mr. Don McCumber, 
President, Nova Scotia, Nunavut Command of the Royal Canadian Legion. Sir. Good afternoon. Silver Cross recipients, honored veterans, comrades, and guests. I thank you for the invitation to join you as you unveil this monument in honor of those who have given the supreme sacrifice while carrying out their duties in the Afghanistan war. Today brings back sad memories that I have while attending at least 90% of the repatriations at CFB Trenton, Ontario. The support to the families at these events and the scenes of all of those on the bridges was indeed heartwarming as thousands paid their respect to the fallen. This monument will ensure they will forever be remembered. This monument is indeed a tribute to those who served and returned home after experienced the horrors of this war. They experienced firsthand the loss of their brothers and their sisters. Many returned carrying the scars of battle. To the families and the friends of the fallen who still today suffer from loss, we offer our deepest sympathy. To all who served, we thank you. The Royal Canadian Legion branches and service officers stand ready to assist you in any possible way. On behalf of the members and staff of Nova Scotia Nunavut Command, I thank those involved in the creation of this beautiful and powerful tribute. Let's remember the fallen and honor the living. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I'll now call up Mr. Lauren Baird, President, RCL Branch 10, Amherst. Welcome, everyone. I'll be brief. It seems like a lifetime ago that Justin McKay Bill Archer and myself approached town council with the idea of an Afghanistan memorial. Justin developed the idea after talking to Afghanistan veterans and he felt what they needed was a place to go, a place they could call their own, a place they could reminisce, remember, and above all, heal. You have it here today, that place and a monument designed not by a famous artist, but by soldiers that were there and served outside the wire. This is your home. Enjoy it, use it, remember, and above all, heal. Welcome home, veterans. Thank you very much, sir. And I'll call on the representative for the Memorial Cross families, Mr. James Parker Davis. Thank you for inviting me up. I wasn't quite expecting this, but uh, I'm glad you're giving me this wonderful opportunity. And first and foremost, I definitely thank Justin McKay for uh, asking me to come here for this event. Um, what I want to tell you is, when I go to my son's grave, he's not there. I don't feel him there. But I want you to know that when I come to a ceremony like this, I feel Paul's spirit. And last night, Paul sent me a message. And he wanted me to tell you veterans how happy he and his fallen comrades are that you made it home safely. And he wants you to enjoy your families and 
enjoy this wonderful country, Canada. Thank you for inviting me to say that. Thank you. Goddamn onions. I'll now call up Honorary Colonel, Nova Scotia Hollanders, David Fairbanks, OMM, CD, Casey. Not only am I short, I'm going to be short. See? I had to kind of consider this one of the most prestigious honors I've ever been given, an opportunity to speak, especially for those wearing the silver cross. Some of my thoughts are really how, in a way, I feel about being here. And I wrote it down so halfway through I wouldn't forget it. It would go on for an hour. But the poet John Doan expressed the view that no one is an island. We're all part of the mainland. When someone's lost, we all suffer that loss because we are all one. So it is with those who are named on the monument all Canadians have suffered a loss with the loss of every single one of them because they served all of Canada. Therefore, they're just as much a part of Amherst, Nova Scotia, whether they ever resided here or not. And it's right and proper that each and every one of them should be honored here today. When a pebble's thrown into a still pool of water, the effects are noted right where the stone went into the water, but those effects are spread out far beyond that center. So it is with the loss of these we honor here today. The loss is deepest with those who wear the silver cross, but it's shared with family, relatives, friends, both inside and outside the military, and in all walks of civil life. And we must never forget their service. And we must never forget those who return home wounded, physically and wounded in spirit. The veterans who bear scars that are both seen and those scars that cannot be seen. It seems to me that Afghanistan, there was no truly safe place to be. It just turned out that some places were far more dangerous than others. And it's our job to remember all who served in whatever capacity in Afghanistan. Let's remember their service, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I will now call on the commanding officer designate, Nova Scotia Islanders, Major Michael Bennett, CD. Hello, everyone. First to uh, bring compliments from uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hale, who couldn't be with us today. He's traveling back from overseas and uh, offers his thanks to our uh, world-class pipe and drum band who is uh, here to be with the parade today. We have heard why this is an important time. Those of us who've been there, those of us who've served in uniform, those of us who've lost family, we understand that. We're gonna carry that with us for the rest of our lives. But what I want to, who I wanna speak to today are those of you who have not worn the uniform, those of you who have not lost someone, 
because there's a substantial crowd of people here today and quite a number of you are here and I thank you for being here and being with us as this is unveiled because you are about to go through a small ceremony that we have gone through over and over again. So I will charge you with something. Take that to heart. Understand it. Feel it. Talk to the people who were here, who are in uniform or who were in uniform and understand what they've done. So on the side of the wall here, it says, we will remember them. And you're going to hear that in the ceremony. But I want you to do more. I want you to understand it and then do something with that. So when the opportunity comes again to remember them, go and do that. When the opportunity comes for you to explain that to somebody else as to why they should be going with you on November the 11th to a ceremony, take the time. Because as John McRae said to us, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. The torch is here. It's been thrown to you. You take the time. You hold that torch high. We will not be here forever. You will. Your children will. Your grandchildren will. Keep the memory alive. Thank you very much, sir. That concludes the uh, formal speeches uh, prior to the unveiling. I'll just introduce myself right now. I'm uh, Warren Oster, retired. Uh, Craig Hood, Executive Director, Nova Scotia Nova Command, and your MC for today. If you uh, have any questions, you can come see me later, and I'll talk to the Afghanistan veterans later as well. We'll now move on to the unveiling. So I'll pass it on to uh, Sergeant at Arms, Justin McKay, to call on his unveiling party. I now call on Reverend S. Gamble to give the dedication prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Everlasting God, today we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. We ask your blessing on this beautiful monument, this memorial to the fallen from Canada's mission in Afghanistan. May it remind us and all who pass by of the bravery, commitment, and selflessness of all those whose military service and sacrifice is commemorated here. May it remind us and all who pass by that every single day we are called to remember them. May it remind us and all who pass by to reach out to our wounded and may it always be a place of peace where troubles can be shared and laid down. Fears recede and memories reconciled. Turn our hearts and minds to your ways of just and gentle peace. Open our eyes to see you in all acts of compassionate care. Strengthen our hearts to step out in solidarity with your suffering people and hold us all in your unfailing love. May this memorial, memorial remain an inspiration to this generation and all who follow to do our duty with courage and integrity in the service of God and all humankind, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. They shall not grow old, as we there left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. In the morning, and the going down in the sun, we will remember them. May God, who puts all things together, who makes all things whole, who made a lasting mark through the great sacrifice, the sacrifice of life that sealed the eternal agreement, who led our great shepherd up alive from the dead, now put you together, provide you with everything you need to please God, by the sacrifice of the eternal one forever and always. Amen. <laughs> 